Hello. Hello. Morning. Hi there, everyone. Give people probably one more minute to trickle in and then we'll go ahead and get started. James, were you gonna drive things today or? Sure, I think it's just a couple things left here, so. Yep. Okay, I think we can probably get started stuff by the effort. Uh, welcome, everyone. Hope you had a good few weeks with KubeCon and all the other events that happened. Um, I guess this is a CNCF meeting, so we do follow the CNCF guidelines. If you have any uh, questions or concerns, uh, please reach out to one of the leads of the group. Um, Otherwise, we do follow the CNCF um, code of conduct. And so everyone uh, be nice to each other. Um, and yeah, we can go ahead and get started. So it's March 26th. We'll be talking about OCI and WASM. Um, so I think we left off last time. We had gotten through quite a few, uh, pretty much through most of the design. There's a final question around the unique field and um in the uh config and brandon took that to the oci group and it's recommended that we have a unique identifier in that field um and actually the spin group ran into this um kind of almost as we were talking about it uh and, and in if you use container d and use ctr everything works fine without a unique id in that config if you use OCI or if you use um, the cry and, and essentially through Kubernetes, that ID is taken from the, con the config. And so they were updating their app and it wasn't being um, noted, recognized as updated. So some of those older fields, uh, some of those older tools were, weren't quite updated to using the latest thing. So uh, this essentially does say, um, we want to use a unique field. It doesn't have to be the root FS um, here. Um, and so, I, I, that, or at least that's my understanding. It doesn't have to be the root FS. It can just be anything unique in there. Um, and so I think we just need to come up with something that is unique uh, for 
the, the config. I don't know if anybody has any, any thoughts or ideas there or questions about, about that. Yeah, I mean, I think it makes sense why we need it. I want to figure out if there's something um, Luke came off video, which means he's probably going to be like, there's some field or thing we can use from the wit or something. <laughs> so I'm going to let Luke say something. But yeah, I think if we can find something that's simpler than having to hash all the, the files or whatever and put them there again, um, that'd be great. But I'm just curious. Well, I was just going to ask, is... Uh, is is the idea like it could just be like some randomly generated like GUID or something? I think, I think so. And Brandon. then the question would be, is it is it better to be random or is it better to be content somehow? If what people want is that the hash of this config file somehow implies the identity of the contents, should we use the content hash of the contents? I'll uh, yeah, put my security hat on real quick, which is to say I'd rather it be something predictable for reproducibility. So, so suggests the content hash then some kind of content hash usually works well for that i mean if that's the case i'd say the most straightforward way is to take the exact same hashes that are inside of the uh, the exact same digests that are inside of the layers and just throw those together in order and then ha get a hash of that or something like that or just put a, a an array of all of those um either one's fine with me And I'll tell we're so excited about this. <laughs> um, <laughs> anyway. Uh, <laughs> I can hear the pains from all the people saying, no, we don't have a root FS, but uh, yeah, just something that makes sense there, whatever works for you. Yeah. Brandon, you had mentioned before that root FS was the uncompressed, like the actual content when it, as represented on disk shaws, as opposed to the digest of these generally being like the digest of the final like tarball of each layer in a normal Docker, like our normal container, OCI container type thing. Um, is, is that correct? That is. Is it going to be a bad thing if we just reuse the same digests? I don't think it would be bad at all. Um, and okay. if your content is already like binary and you're not running it through and gzip again, that would just be the same digest on both sides then. Okay. Yeah. So then I think we just, we have, um, I think what we'll do is just delete this comment right here because we'll need it now that we've talked about it. Um, and then, yeah, I think we do the exact same thing. I think we just have the exact like type layers, diff IDs, and then the ordered list that is in the exact same order as the layers. I, I guess I would, Say let's not call it root FS, <laughs> um, but because I think that's misleading for, from from our perspective. Um, I'm okay calling it something else. Is that going to screw up any existing tooling that anyone knows of? That's all I care about. If it's not, then I'm fine making it tailored to our use case. I get the impression that since you're writing the tooling that's extracting this, you'll probably be okay if you name it something different. Yeah, and, and we, I, I, for the spin up, the thing we did was we, they called it something. Um, and then uh, they took the SHA of the, like they, they, have a, they have a unique identifier for their, for their entire app built into their system. And so they just took that and put that on there. Um, So are those that list of shahs? Those are the shahs that are of the individual layers that are also in the the, the base the, the manifest. Yeah. Okay. Well, then, would could we like to somehow call them like I don't know the layer hashes or just layers or so that it's sort of just saying. Yeah, I I was gonna I was okay. looking for names, so let's call it layer hashes. Um. Maybe digest would be a better word. True.
Um, can you link that that issue that you were that we were pointing to, James, inside this comment? I'm going to keep adding, but um, we can put it there. Um, Perfect. Problem solved. So now we have that field and it should be unique every time, as long as you have pushed something with a different digest inside the list of stuff. Um, okay, perfect. Um, so at one point, some someone mentioned that if we're not pushing something that is, is more of just an interface, is it Possible is it? Is there a possibility for that interface to? No, I guess it would be unique. Never mind. So <laughs> I was just thinking, like, if you push a bunch of layers and somehow the interface is is different, but if you push, if you change the interface, it would change it. So uh, stop talking now. <laughs> Nobody likes digesting things first thing in the morning, unintended. Yep. Okay, I'll I'll go away now. That was a terrible. Programming fun. Anyway, so um the yeah, I think I think we're good there. Do you think so, everybody? Yeah, thanks for looking at that, James. It feels like I feel a lot better about having that diligence and understanding what it is what we're really what's necessary here. All right, so I think we can close that up. Um I think the last part here is just discussing the entry point, like how do we select which um, component is the component that starts and, and if there's any functions inside of it um, that that would we would want folks to be able to override or something like that. Um, we had discussed at one point several different options here. So uh, it would, essentially the order of the layers that get put into the, the manifest. So the top layer would be the top component. Um, we could put it in the config that we were just discussing there. Um, and then um, I, I'm not sure if I remember what the two media types were. Uh, oh, I think, I think we've decided to stick with one media type in, instead of two. Uh, and then uh, we can put data on the annotations of those layers so we can have an annotation that identifies the, the runnable uh, component. I was a fan of the simplicity of just saying item at index zero is the main thing to start with. Um, I'm just curious if anyone can come up with any like contrary examples where that would be a bad idea. So um, I, I actually like that idea too. I just one thing that I noticed when I was working in Runwazi was that um, we have a little tool that orders things uh, and we're using the Rust um, OCI library. And if you don't use, if you use like a standard hash map or something like that to kind of order things, it come, when you print it out, it comes out in any random order. Uh, and so, uh, we you had to use like a indexed hash map, I think is what I ended up using, uh, yeah. just to make sure that everything was in the same order. Um, and many of the annotations and labels and things weren't this weren't would, wouldn't come out in the same way um, every time. Uh, so the re reproducibility of that. But I say that just from a you know if if we make that we need to make sure the tooling um, is aware of that so that it, it's always printed in the same order that they are added. So. Layers are a vec, though, right? So they should always be ordered. Uh, for some reason, in ours, we were using we we like matched up. I think because they were, they were using the rootfs initially, and we were like taking a collection of the rootfs, and there, there was some reason we were using a, an index um, there. But 
yeah, if you get any ordering problems, since I'm the main one of the maintainers of the OCI crate and rest, just let me know and we can fix that. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, I, I think that I, I didn't hear any contrary opinion. So I think the easiest thing we stick with is we say like layer zero is the, the, the first artifact. Um, and then, um, the other, I guess the other question that like, what does that mean is I know we talked, this is, this is a little for, we don't have to solve this now, but I'm making sure we don't paint ourselves into a corner is I imagine there could be something in, um, in the future, if this is like the exploded view, that this first thing is the thing that has the final exports that come out from all of it. Um, and then like, how, like, is, is that what it's supposed to be used as? Is that like, we could be including like a WAC file or something along those lines where saying like, this is the thing, like this is the thing you're composing to the end, like the thing you'll finally export out when you're done putting everything together. Um, I'm just curious, like for future, like if we're painting ourselves into a corner at all by saying like the first thing is the, if you're gonna execute it, the first thing that you th see is what you're executing. I guess in that case, if we wanted a different artifact that was not, because at least what, what I think we're defining is like, ultimately that we're talking about one component and that's been exploded out. If we wanted a different thing, that's like, oh, it's it's a WAC file. It's uh, something else. Presumably we change some media type somewhere. Is it like, I guess the config media type, is that the primary key that says what this is? Yeah, it says it what just... the, the, final, the final like thing of it is. So like the, that's the media type of the config itself. Yeah which has that structured type we've defined. And then there's the media type, which is like the normal, like yeah. standard media type things that we've, so, we've talked about so, before. So the media type of the config is really talking about the type of the entire, the whole artifact or slash image Correct. or is that right? Yeah. And just to get my terminology right, the, the, the manifest, this is an image manifest. Is that what we would what this is officially called or something else that's we've been reusing the image manifest for everything in fact we should have a media type in this file okay yeah that's what i was looking for because i thought yeah image typed manifest also had their own media type or whatever it is do we need to have an artifact type or a media type brandon a, a media type that just says this is the image manifest oh is that's there a top level field called media type yep okay i thought there wasn't let's get to and it that was, will just say this. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Uh, I was going to say it was optional at one point, and so you might not see it in some stuff. But at a certain point, we realized that's an actually a security risk because someone could create an index and an image manifest, merge them into the same thing. You push a single digest up, and depending on what the registry thinks it is, what headers the registry comes back with, two different clients interpret it completely differently. It it broke a lot of stuff, so. Yeah, media types are good in there. And would the media type here just be the same one that a normal like you know OCI container would use? It is. We reuse the same structure. Registries are really picky about media types for the manifest, mm -hmm. but not for any of the content in there. All the blobs in there, you're fine to put whatever you want on that for the most part. And with the decision, because I know initially we were trying to do an artifact, and that, but we walk you know didn't change uh so we're not doing that so now this is we're just using a like uh, the same media type as any other normal uh oci image is that right yeah, it's how oci recommends doing it and i can link over some of the advice in there for that one artifact type um may maybe not it's it's like 50 50 whether or not you're worried about that if it's not there we fall back to the config media type and so that works well enough that's what helm and others do today Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm fine with me. I'm just uh, trying to understand what what the uh, design is. So media type is there? What's the media type that should be used here? I'm getting it for you, and I will paste it into the document for you. Perfect. Awesome. I asked a question here about WASI, which I hadn't noticed until just now. But is is WASI what we want to call this, or you know, there's a possible, you know options um we went back and forth on this the the thing is is we have explicitly said um we've explicitly said that like a wasm artifact could be a component 
or like bare wasm modules like that's what we have at the top of the the thing and so um if we look at the config media type, if it was a plain module, then your architecture would be WASM. Um, your we I'm not sure what the OS would be because it might not be preview to um, inside config media type, and then component could just be empty, um, which is fine. Um, and if we're going to do that, then I think we need to answer like what happens with this field if it's not a component, and then we should probably rename like the config media type to wasm.config rather than wasi.config. Yeah, that's what I was, that's what my intuition would be is that wasm belongs there. Because then we're sub, so that tells us we're in the wasm world and then we subdivide, oh, is it a component? Is it, is it a module? Is it a wasi p1, wasi p2, all that stuff. So um, then then my question still remains like this, we have this OS field set inside of um, inside of here to say like WASI IP2, would it just be like WASM32 or something if it was just plain WASM? Is that what we'd recommend there, Luke? Or like if it's just a plain WASM module? I, I, I suppose if it's a plain WASM module, can subdivide that is there it's targeting wasi which a lot of them are so wasi p1 sort of makes okay. sense there or it's not even using wasi it's just like a random core module that you know doesn't mm -hmm. have anything to do with wasi and, and then we we could you know you, yeah wasm32 well here's the th yeah we wasm32 makes sense when you're building wasm because you want to say basically how big how big are your pointers but when you're consuming mm -hmm. wasm there that, that, that is not a meaningful distinction right because modules contain a mix it's it's just wasm so um yeah probably we shouldn't be seeing wa any ever wasm 32 anywhere in distributable artifacts what what, what is this field going to be used for you think um we talked about this and for some reason let me double check meeting notes but i like that's why i remember typing this right here like we won't need this when we get to like a 1.0 because we'll just be able to like say that it's like not a certain preview version, but I think was the, the point. Oh, no, I'm remembering now. All came back to me. If once we hit preview three, like at the end of the year, or beginning of next year, like this is going to be like, you're going to be able to say this is a preview three or preview four, you know, like until we get to 1.0. Um, and so that was kind of the the point, this, if I remember right. This should follow the OS field there, should follow the Go OS, OS value. Yeah. So whatever they're using, and they've got WASI P1 and others out there. On let me let me check the Go OS stuff. The Go target. Syslist.go. There it is. Okay, so um. Okay, so they have WASI IP1 is the only one that's in that list. So let me link this source file and you can see it at the top when I put it in chat. You'll see that there's only WASI IP1 in that first list, which is the Go OS. I believe WASI P2 is some vaguely in progress. Yeah, so I think that one's coming. It'll show up. Yeah. Yeah, WASI P1 and WASI P2 are, make sense. Those are, I think that's, this seems like the right place to put that. Okay, so we're going to say this is WASI P1 or WASI P2. Um, I, I think for guidance, I think we would probably say if you, if it's just plain WASM, just use WASI IP1 because it has to be a, like it still has to match a Go OS value of some kind. I think that's probably our best, but our best bet. Does anyone disagree? That makes sense to me. Okay. Could you just write in the comments that asked to match the goes? Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm adding that in at yeah. the end of this comment right here. Yeah, I think for users, their concern is just pointing them to the goose go OS. 
I like to say Go OS, but apparently I'm wrong on that one. I like calling Go OS because saying goose does not sound very good to me. It's like when you say cube cuddle, because who wants to cuddle the cubes? Um anyway, so I I won't ignite. Hug. I won't I won't ignite that debate here. Um okay, let me finish typing this one out. Um So in that case, I think we should rename the, make sure we have the config media type, just be called vnd.wasm.config, if that's okay with everyone. Um, and then that way we can make sure this is standard for everybody. Okay. Um, and I'll put a note here that if you're doing bare, whoa. Do not mean to do four of those. Um, do we want this to be optional or do we want this to be just an empty hash map if it's plain Wasm? I would think optional so you don't have okay. it. Yeah, so it can just somebody... be null or not present. Okay. Is it required if it's a component? So it's just like metadata. Um, I think when we, if we write this up from a spec thing, I'd say if this is a component, this field must be specified. Maybe you would or, say this field is should be present if and only if it's a component, and which really conflates uh, matches if it's WASI P one or P two. Right. So P one does not have it. P two does have it, and then you. The target may get a little tough to get right uh, since it's not in the binary uh, sometimes. Tar target is optional, I believe. OK. Yeah, target is an optional field. I, I did label that when we created this because we knew like it's a it's a may. They don't have to use it, but you can use it to like fetch other worlds and spe and check things. Um, we had talked about config. Um, was everyone there for when uh, Guy Bedford gave the uh, WASIvert overview um, a few weeks ago? And then I gave a talk at WASM Day for those who were, that's actually up. If you want to go see it in action, I use it there too. Um, after playing around with it myself, I think WASIvert is the best option for, for adding in config from a runtime level rather than trying to specify inside of the config type, like with additional data. Um, because just, you know, composing things together. The only question I have is, so I think for components, there's a reason you can compose them together and get things like WASI heard. For plain WASM, do we need to have a field like this? Is there anything that needs to be specified for plain WASM that they would need to do? Earlier when we said uh, WASI P1 doesn't have the component fields, there could be a module or core field that is present only if you're WASI P1, and that could be the place where you put stuff that makes sense in a WASI P1 context, like conf like config options that you want to set, or if anyone still wants to do static assets, that, or you know all, all the normal things that you you do when you don't have WASI vert. But that probably opens up a can of worms because now there's you know there's a number of those. Maybe that can be like a future <laughs> sort of thing. Or I don't know. Um, I I have been biased with this stuff to keep things as lean as possible because it's always easier to add than to take away. So what do people think about putting a note that basically says that? Like <clears throat> we could have an optional 
like module field for plain WebAssembly modules that could carry additional context as needed, but we will add that as the use cases emerge. Would that be an okay like thing to say here for our first release of this? Okay. I'll also keep some stuff around WasiVert, but I'll just... um. <clears throat> Sweet. That look okay to everyone. Um, I mean, eventually WASI P1 goes away. And so then in the future, we don't need to add those fields. Is that... uh -huh. Yeah, maybe, hopefully. <laughs> I mean, that's the hope. But there's also the, the case, like, I, you know, we never know what life we're going to breathe into this. People are going to be like, maybe this is the way I'm going to start destroying all sorts of WASM and things. We're going to be like, oh, no. But you know what? If that happens, great. Um, <laughs> Then, then we can have a conversation about maybe having two different config types at that point because it's it's used well enough. Like, I'd rather have that be our problem than not have people using it, so. Okay, so the only other thing we kind of got halfway through is we say the first item is your, um, the first item is the thing you're executing, is that correct? So like, that's the thing that actually executes and, and moves things forward. Okay, um, is there any kind of notes we need to define exactly what that means? Or is that just saying a runtime should take a look at that and that's the root exports it should be using? Like right now we're not defining any specific way of jamming them back together if this is an exploded component or anything. We're just saying like, this is the this is the entry point. So then we're saying in the future, there might be more direction, but right now we're just saying, if there's multiple things in here, use the first one and you can use anything else in there based on whatever you want to do in your runtime and, and introspecting it and whatnot, correct? Well, I mean, I guess technically you're right. You, you could do anything you want with the other layers, but the, the primary goal is that that root component that's in layers, the first layer, mm -hmm. it's going to have imports with content hashes that will be looked up against all the other content hashes. So this is defining a tiny little local namespace of content hashes imported by the root component. So that's that's what links them together is the root component has yeah content hash supports. So does that mean when someone puts one of these together and pushes them to a um to a registry, does that mean they're gonna have to do the, the step to rewrite the named imports to hash like digest digested imports? Is that what's gonna have to happen? So what would probably happen is you start with a single file component, right? And mm -hmm. it's when because it's a single file, it's nesting all of its, you know core modules and other components inside of it, just in line in the bytes. And so the process of exploding is pulling them out of line, getting a content okay. hash, and then importing via content hash. So there's a special import string that just, it's just a content hash. It doesn't have any other name. And so it was added for just this purpose. OK. So likely, we're not going to have exploded to start off. So I'm going to capture this in the notes and say, like, most likely you're going to have one layer and one layer only to start off. But when we get to exploding, there will be, we'll, we'll um, provide examples of showing how to do these with like content hash importing instead. I think that's what we say here. Um, so that way people know what's coming. And if anyone wants to experiment, they can go play around with it, but we're not going to like 
the, I don't think we're going to like write a standard set of tooling to do that right now with an OCI registry. We'll start off with saying like, here's your, here's your one thing. I'm going to pull it down and run it and then move on. So. How, how does that compare to like um, using WAC or something similar where you're trying to compose them together? Is that similar concept or different? That's a great question. Yeah. WAC is a way to create author a component that is composed of other components. So after I compile WAC, if I pass it into WASM Compose, right, the output of WASM Compose can be a single file that nests all those components in line. So WAC is going to pull them together. And now you might just run it, or you might upload it to OCI, in which case you re-explode it. <laughs> and you could say, well, what's the point? Did I just like implode and then re-explode or something? The, the difference is WAC allowed you to wire up the DAG very explicitly because there's it's it's uh there, there's many possible ways to do it so you need so WAC lets you say exactly how you want to do it and then that root component captures that information how are they wired up precisely and so that way when you re-explode it you're preserving that information via the root component of how precisely are they wired together so uh, WAC is part of the producer tool chain that produces that final root component that is the root of a whole DAG you know and 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 then uh yeah does that answer your question. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, and so we don't necessarily need to include WAC config or anything in here because yeah. that would be part of the developer workflow of exactly. producing the. Yeah, okay. yeah. WAC, WAC's not the even the only way to create a compound component. Like using Danny Makave's like depth solve tool, that will create a compound component that just does it use the depth solve. So that's kind of like automatic mode. WAC is like manual mode. <laughs> so you could Got say it. there's two ways to create compound components these in, today. And, and either way, you don't kind of care. You just get a root component out of the whole thing. And then when you upload OCI, you can re-explode it or not, right? You don't, no, nothing forces you to explode it. Even if you do have a big nested compound component, you can upload it as a single layer. It, the, the point of breaking out layers is only deduplication, which is just performance. And so the, you don't need any extra tooling on the runtime side to be able to pull right. all those things together. Yeah. yeah. Don't need WASM Compose in the runtime, which is very different by the by the way than Docker Compose, right? Because that is part of the runtime. It is, it is the runtime in a sense. So yeah, this is a meaningful distinction. So what I tend to think about when I'm thinking about your layer definition there is how new tools will interpret old content and vice versa, how old tools will interpret new content. I think that might be the tougher thing of if you start pushing new content that has multiple layers that you expect to be merged together, you might want to have some phrasing in there that says, hey, if you see this, we haven't defined that in the spec yet, you should probably reject it just because you don't know what to do with it. Good call out. I'll add that right here. And I think for a concrete use case, the spin folks, they take, they, right now, they, they're pushing to OCI and they have, um, they might have three or four distinct components that are all loaded at runtime, depending on various factors. Um, I think we discussed this before, but would they use the same media type here? Or would they put an annotation on there to say like, hey, don't treat this as the root component because there isn't a root component in our, well, there is, but there might be multiple root components because of the way the runtime works. Yeah, yeah that's, that's that's a really great point. Go ahead. I think that's the decision you'll make when you define what it's gonna look like when you start adding multiple entries in here. And so that's where we're right now saying there's only one entry in this version of the spec so far. And then that gives you a like sensibility in the future when you start adding multiple things and you expect the logic of how to merge them together, you define that then. Well, I think in the spin case, the way that they're linking those multiple root components together is, is a spin app detail. That's, that's not via components, that's via spin. So I would think they would have a different config media type because it's they're configuring a spin app. That's a different kind of thing. It may be built out of components and WASM modules and whatever they want and static assets and, you know, um, but but it, that would be I think it should be a different uh, uh, config media type spin app and probably in there there's some spin manifest right that's going to be a Tomo file right that's going to be part of the runtime semantics of a spin app and that thing may 
refer to other components, you know, that are them separate OCI, you know, images, like it may like link to them, you know, or, or not. But that I, th I think the key is that a spin app is, is not a component. Um, with the, I'm, I'm trying to make sure this, this works. So I want we need to make sure it works for everybody. Um, is that theoretically, like you could be pulling in a, a component that can be used inside of spin, right? Via OCI. Is that correct, James? Like that's the idea is like that would, that would pull in the, the component for that, or they could pull in multiple components. Um, but there, I think there is a case here. You could theoretically have multiple unexploded components you put together in a single manifest. Um, I would say that's a little confusing because when I have one root component that imports other components, it's very clear how to compose them. If I have multiple root components, what does that even, what does it mean if there's not a router component <laughs> that says how they link together, right? Like yeah. you could say, well, they're all microservices and they talk via HTTP, but that's now we've shifted, you know, domains. Now we're in domain of spin apps or, or WASM cloud apps or, or, or five other things, right? So how to take multiple routes and have them talk to each other through HTTP or whatever, that's, that's a, that is outside of the scope of what the component model can even talk about. So as long as the config type here is just a component, a module or a component, like, I think that's, there should only be one root and it's the first layer. And then everything else is imported by that root. And therefore how they compose is determined by the root. So now we're, you know, we're very well defined um, just by, you know, WASM, you know, core or component model. I don't know if that makes sense to other people though. There's that, I mean, I think I'm definitely in favor of not, of not mixing because you need to have one thing that it, that it points to eventually. Um, and then you can, recompose those as needed um here's the uh because yeah the, there is like defining an application as an application runtime semantic spin has their spin.toml um if you're running one in wasm cloud you're probably using a wadam manifest that does it like that that all makes sense the the thing that's really interesting though um especially in the component model that makes me wonder about this especially with the um the content hash importing that i just thought of is when you have um, like uh, Wasm Cloud is obviously the example I think of, but like if you want to take a piece of application and run it like separately or dynamically link it or reuse a component like it, because in our case, like with Wasm Cloud, I could have like, let's say I have a, a composed component that has like some, let's say like a, it's a ping or pong or type thing. And I want to actually like take one of those things and run it elsewhere and have the rest of the application run over here. And now it has a hash instead of like a concrete name that um can be used as like a a thing to say like oh i'm gonna i'm gonna link these two um i'm not sure if this if that actually matters or not I'm, we might even be able to reverse look it up anyway as to what the name is because the will be carried along with it but I, I just was thinking about that too could, could the sub part be published as a separate oci image that uses this the same layer but by publishing a separate oci image you give it a separate url oci url that points actually, into what's the subtree of the of the the bigger component. That's actually probably the better. I, now that I'm now that you're saying it out loud, that's actually probably what I'm. It, it actually works just fine because you're still saying here's the. It's essentially a, another root component at that point because that's the that's the point we struggled with when we were first defining that is that every component could be a root component, like or it could be a library. It doesn't really matter. Um, so I think that 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 matters here. Um, the the thing that you were talking about though, I still want to make sure we've addressed that, James, around like if something is like a spin app, it is the idea that then they I think that each of those pieces that they run inside of an application would be a separate OCI manifest. Same thing with what we would do like inside of Wasm Cloud as well. We'd say each of these pieces, they're they're part of maybe what could be composed all together as a single component if we really wanted to, but in this case, we're running them as separate pieces and separate things. Yeah, I, I think. One of the, if, if we do a different config.media type, I think one of the concerns from like a uh, container runtime perspective is we need to then know about all the individual apps that come up with a different config media type to be able to handle those. And, and I would like to avoid that. It's like, hey, if you have this config media type, then we can set things up in a way and hand off the layers to you to, to the runtime under, underneath without having to know about all the different types config media types. Um, I think that's that was one of the original 
thoughts that I had with having a single config media type. Um, go ahead, Brendan. I'm thinking this is a scenario where the OCI index might be the the top level of the manifest list for people that are used to the Docker terms. And then in there, you're just going to look for how you can differentiate between different implementations so that one implementation looking through that list can see, here's the version of this image manifest artifact that I'm looking for, whether that's because you have WASI P1 versus P2 in there, whether there's a different config media type that gets pulled up as the artifact type, whatever you need to key off of to say, here's the one that I need for my runtime. And then, like you were saying earlier, you can have multiple image manifest, each point to the same WASM binary underneath the covers, but with just different data in there, they might need for their individual runtimes. So are you still saying there'd be a separate config media type per thing like that? I am avoiding saying exactly that, but saying that is an option that you can go with if you need to do it. Here, here's my thinking on this, James, is I'm trying to think of it in terms of like, what what's the generic thing? Like, so the world we're aiming for is that components are the thing people are using um, for stuff. So like, I, I mean, and that's why, for example, I'm getting very close. I've been working, for example, the spin folks on finalizing some changes we want to make to the WASI key value interface so that we can, we both have implementations. We've both been using them for years. We're going to see like, can, can we make this work? And so the idea is that a component that I write that uses the WASI key value interface can run in WASM cloud, which implements that interface and spin, which implements that interface. And if we try to put in application layer semantics into that, um, then we we lose some of that portability. That's what makes me think like a can like maybe a like this is this is a type like if you just want a plain component, I think that's what this media type specifies. I don't think there's a way to get around if you want to package up a final like here's my full application in context of my runtime. Here is like my manifest with my WDAM file and all the things I want in it. And then here's my spin app with my spin.toml and all the things I want in it. I think those are fundamentally different artifacts that we don't want to like, we can, we as runtime people who are, who are doing those can say, yeah, kind of like CNAB, wait a second. Um, and then like we, we as runtime people already have those, like those specific types we're using. And I don't think we need to get rid of those, but I think they can point out because the layers are reusable across the, um, the things like you could still have a component um, and, and even like the individual, like a spin manifest type and a wasm cloud manifest type would, um, still be able to reuse. They'd still have layers that had like application, like media type application wasm, and those things could be shared across an uploaded component. But I think it's probably better to consider this from, from outside, like have, have those things be separate things that are defined by their, their runtimes because we're doing that just fine right now everyone is right like we just have a custom artifact type we key off of that artifact type we pull down and we have all those things um available to us and so i think that's still okay to do that's why the artifact type exists but then this allows us to define like a component imploded exploded however you want to do it and then that component can be consumed by that tooling as needed especially the the layers of it I think might be like the because then then it is generic and can be the the things that get reused. So when I publish that key value component that works on Wasm Cloud and on Spin and on anyone else uh, implementing that interface, you're able to take that component and then say, now I'm going to shove this inside of my Spin.toml or I'm going to shove this inside of my WDAM file or I'm going to shove this inside of whatever other runtime um, manifest that we have. So I think that seems like the the straightest path forward because it's the more generic saying here's a component here's a component. And we can keep using our, our concrete types because um, if we just say, oh, I'm going to use the key and then pass all the layers in, then you get this thing of like, if there's, let's say, le I, you start getting something messy. If, if we want something that runs on spin and wasm cloud, you might have some spin specific details and some wasm cloud specific details. Um, we don't actually have a manifest type that we put into OCI for WDAM, but just assuming for the, for the case of like the debate, right? And so then like the manifest has to go, hmm. 
can't find this one. What about the next one? Oh, there's my spin.toml. You know, like that feels like really clunky, um, especially as you get more like now there's 10 different application runtimes. Like now I have to sort through 10 different layers and figure out which one is the config I actually care about and then bail out. And so uh, that's, I don't know, sorry. I got a little bit on a soapbox, but I was just kind of thinking through it maybe half out loud. I'm curious what thoughts you have there. Yeah, I mean, I, I think I agree with you from, from that perspective. Um, I, I'm i trying to figure out like how, like if I'm going into container D and I'm trying to, and I don't have to hash this out now, but I, I need to think about it is like, how do I have something that can be pulled down and passed off to the, the run times without having to have to key in all the different types of media types for this 10 different applications out there. I think that's the part that I don't have an answer for from, from what you were saying. Um, so I think I, I, I'm going to, I'll think on that a little bit further, <laughs> but I, I think I agree with all the points that you made. Um, so. Well, yeah. I, interesting I, point is that with the, 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 you know, when I imagine and from what I've understand of this, of, of the spin tomal and also a is there's, they're going one level higher in the component model. And they're talking about distributed computing, right? Where I'm running components on different machines. And, and now it's, that's just, you know, a whole different kind of thing. And so, you know, that now, now uh, it's, uh, you're not just giving the whole thing to every runtime, right? There's probably some orchestrator that's somehow looking at this one artifact that describes the orchestration. And then you're telling individual nodes, hey, you run this component, you run this component, you run this component. And then it's, so each node is given one OCI URL for one component because that's its job in the orchestration. So to throw this in, kind of give a little context of how other stuff not specific to Wasm looks at this. If a runtime sees a bunch of layers that it doesn't recognize, or even one layer that it doesn't recognize in that list, it's usually going to reject it. Um, you know, if it sees something that's bzip compressed instead of gzip, and it doesn't know how to do the bzip decompression, although everybody should these days, it's just going to say, nope, I don't know what to do with that one layer. Therefore, I'm not going to even try to run this entire image. Um, and so that similar logic might make a lot of sense for what you're doing here. So if, if something looks at this list and sees one thing for spin and it's not a spin implementation, it might just say, hey, this wasn't designed for me. I shouldn't even try to run it. And in addition to the OS architecture where you can do WASM P1, P2, and some of those fields in there you can put in the platform, in addition to the artifact type you can pull up, which is your config media type if you don't directly specify the artifact type, you can also have annotations up there. And so that gives you one, one additional option. So that is something we are looking at in a working group for image compatibility right now in OCI to say, if you see multiple entries in there and you're trying to pick and choose which one, you can leverage that annotation field to have certain runtimes out there that prefer other ones. And so we're looking at overloading that with say, this machine has a GPU. And so here's the image that's optimized for a GPU and pick that one instead of the others. Yeah, I mean, this is a classic problem. This this James is why we wrote Bindle way back when was explicitly for this kind of stuff. It was like, hey, I need to kind of feature flag this. And so um it's it's a it's a problem. We all know it is. So I mean, I, I think to start, we're gonna have to just say like for maximum compatibility, we do this. So I think what we can do is next time. Um yeah, we're getting close to time. I can let you close out here, James. But my my suggestion was going to be, I think next time we can probably talk about that and we can maybe come to a, a, a vote among us and say, do we feel comfortable with this? And then I think we do the the rounds of going back to the main WASM working group and presenting this and then going to um basically get sign off from from most of the major implementers. Like I want, like I want, even though we're we're all maintainers and stuff from there, that's why we made this group. Like I want to go to the like run WASI stuff. And I want to open an issue and run WASI and say like request for feedback. Does this look okay? And in the WASM cloud and in the spin and then, you know, all the people who are using this and just say like, does this look okay? Um, and then we can, um, we'll, we'll have to figure out how we do it. I don't want to get stuck in, in pedantry nets forever. I, I want the more of the question to be, does this work or is this just not going to work for you at all? Like that's, that's the, 
the thing I'm hoping we can have the the conversation focused around. But anyway, that's just my idea. Yeah, do we want to have one more meeting with us and then? Yeah, that's what that I'm saying. Or... I think okay. next week we we can talk about like, are we all okay with it? And then also follow up on this this remaining question of like, can we represent all these things when something might be like an application, like bundled as an application, essentially what we were having the, the conversation on before. Okay, sounds good, I think. Any other final thoughts or comments? All right, well then we'll see everybody in two weeks on April 9th. All right, thanks everyone. Thanks everyone, good combo.